next speaker is a TypeScript, a TypeScript expert, uh, Stefan. Stefan is a Belgian beer fan. We even scored him some Westvleteren. But unfortunately, due to COVID regulations, he wasn't able to make it in person. Uh, but thanks to 21st century technology, we can still enjoy his talk and learn something. So we will start uh, uh, the video right now. And um, Stefan will tell us about uh, TypeScript stuff. Belgium. Uh, oh, wow. So here we are again, watching a video uh, and looking at an empty code editor, just like in home office. How great is that? Oh, no. I'm, honestly, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for not being able to join you in person today. Um, I wish I could. I was looking forward to this event for such a long time. Um, but the current lockdown situation in Austria just doesn't allow for me uh, to leave my family. That's why I'm joining you via a recording, um, talking a little bit about TypeScript with you today. So, hey, um, my name is Stefan. Um, I go on the internet by Dad Parrot, and Dad Parrot is arguably the worst name that you're going to see today. Monty Python fans out there, you know what that means. Um, I blog a lot on fatblog.eu. It's a tech blog. It's the second worst name that you're going to see today. And I blog about all things uh, JavaScript, JavaScript runtimes, Node.js, a lot about TypeScript, so I guess about 50 or something uh, um, TypeScript articles in there. Um, recently, I started blogging about Rust, so um, there are guides for advanced TypeScript stuff. If you're interested, um, check it out. I'm also the author of um, TypeScriptBook.com. That's a great name. It, it totally <laughs> hits the nail. <laughs> um, it's TypeScript in 50 Lessons. It's a book, all things type system, TypeScript size system, published by Smashing Magazine. Um, I, I never can tell if the content is any good. Uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm way too humble to, to say, wow, it's such a great book. But what I can say is that the packaging is extraordinary. So that the um, publisher totally outdid themselves in creating this book together with me. So, but the A, uh, uh, TypeScript, you know. Um, my talk today is called TypeScript, Gradual, Structural, Dynamic, and Static. And we are going to see what that means today. What you're going to see here is something like an ExpressJS app. Um, I'm pretty sure if, if you've dabbled your toes with Node.js, you've seen code like that. Here on the right-hand side, we have a couple of calls. We have app.get, which means we are listening to get requests on this particular path, uh, which is your app's domain, slash profiles, slash user ID. This colon user ID um, is going to say that colon user ID, um, this is a parameter, so this can be any any string whatsoever. That is a valid, a valid URL, um, which we're going to use later on when we are sending a response. So we are sending a status code, an HTTP status code, um, and sending a response, which in, in that case is a string. It could be JSON, it could be HTML. In that case, it's just a string. Um, so we're getting, this is the typical request response pattern. We're getting a re request um, and we are sending a response. The problem here is that every one of those calls on the right-hand side is completely bogus. They just don't work. There's not a single line there that is actually valid. And this, this doesn't mean just the red squeaky lines and the request and response. This is just because I've turned on strict mode and I'm not allowed to have implicit anys. Um, anys are okay, by the way. Just a side note. Don't boo. No, no, no. Uh, any is okay as long as you're using it explicit. So if, you, if you're driving without a seatbelt, uh, at least tell everybody. So <laughs> this is what the explicit any does. If you ever run into any problems, and not having not having any types that are, are valid enough, this makes it much, much easier to spot. But that aside, everything here on the right hand side just doesn't check out. It's it's completely humbug. Um, and, and we are going to change that today. So over the next 25 minutes, we are going to see um, how we can create an API that's just like we need it for every use case on the right hand side, maybe even a little bit better. Um, and we are going to figure out what those four keywords, gradual, structural, dynamic, and static, mean for, for TypeScript and for the way we are going to use TypeScript. Okay, 
let's get it on. So as I said, we have here a path and callback. It's any that's bogus. That's not something that we want to have. Path um, is a string, okay? And the, the moment we enter string here, so this is this is how fast TypeScript is. Um, we are seeing here that, that 42, this is bogus. This this should be a string, not a number. Let's delete this line altogether. This is an API call that doesn't work. Um, callback um, any, it's a bit bit too wide in our case. Let's create a proper proper callback function. I'm writing type callback function. Um, and the function has a type that's a request, type server request. We're going to create that later on. It has a response of type server respon response. There you go. Um, let's format it a little bit nicer so it fits on the screen. Um, and it returns void, which means it doesn't mean that we are not returning anything. It means that we are not caring about what it returns. We are ignoring the return value. That's a very important distinction. Okay, um, so request, that's pretty easy. If you look on the right hand side, we see that the server request um, is a compound object. It has two, so at least two, um, two fields. Um, one is a method. The method is um, a string, you know, post, put, get, delete, options, header. Um, and the other one is params. And for params, I'm using a built-in type called record, where I say, hey, this is this is an object, a record. It has string keys, um, which can be any string, um, and it has string values. So for now, they should be, they should be just enough. Um, and we have a server response. Um, and from what you can see on the right hand side, it, it has a function called status. The function allows for a status code, which is of type number, you know, 200, 404, 503. You've seen them, you have written web applications. Um, and it returns the server response itself. Um, this is this is so we can chain it, you know, rest.status.send. Okay. And it has a send function. Um, the send function actually sends the response. Um, it allows for any response. Um, it even doesn't need to have a body, um, which can be any. Uh, and it returns void. Again, any is totally fine in that case. We, we are not caring um, about what we're going to send. This can be JSON, this can be a string, this can be HTML. Any is just fine for that. Um, this is this is a very correct use of any. So um, that's a server response. I have a typo here. It's almost like live coding, isn't it? And here I'm going to set the callback function. And what we see um, already, this one here is totally bogus. Rect.http, That's not that's not something. Rest.set status. What set status? That's not something that exists. Uh, remove that. That's that's just broken. Um, and uh, here we also see a couple of errors. So first of all, rec.method and rest status post. Uh, I mix them. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, let's go into change it. Oh, you know what? Let's delete it. Um, rec.method is post, rest.status is 200. That's exactly what we are looking for. But as you can see, I have a couple of typos here. This is the stuff that you get with JavaScript, um, especially since everything can be, can be stringly typed and not strongly typed. Um, typos can be everywhere, and this is also something that we um, don't don't want to have in our code. So we can be much much more narrow here. Um, what do I mean when when saying narrower? So um, what we did first when when looking, for example, um, at um, looking at methods. Okay, um, it could be any which can be any possible value that exists in JavaScript, or whoops. Or it can be a subset of any, which is string, which can be any possible string in JavaScript. Or it can be the literal string get, or the literal string post, which is a subset of string. So in TypeScript, you have the possibility to pinpoint exact values as types. The string get, the literal string get, is a valid type. I could do something like this. Let's see, is of type get, and I can't assign post. Nope, I only can assign get. I also can't assign lowercase get. No, 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 it has to be uppercase get. 
you get it. And this again could also be uh, just so this is this is a set of two values get or post and this is a set of one value which is a subset of the superset get or post. Um, and we can get narrow and narrow and narrow the, the possible amount of values in our application um, just gets smaller until we just have one possible value. First we had every possible value that's any now we have just one possible value and this is something that we're going to use to um, define a method which can be get or post or put or delete or options or headers I don't know header let's do it like that um, and I guess I forgot one it, it doesn't matter we're just looking at get and post anyway so who cares um, and we are not saying this is method is string it's of type method and we're doing the same with um, a status code uh, which can be every HTTP status code and through the power of video editing here they are no, it's not, I just copy and pasted it but you didn't notice so um, from 100 to uh, 599 all possible status codes they are quite a lot am I able to collapse them nope just add a region status code and entity uh, and this is the same same thing so number is is, is a huge space um, double floating point numbers um, we are just interested in in those are, I don't know 50 lines or something 50 explicit numbers we are creating our own set of possible numbers that this um, method uh, status allows so status code is not of type number it's of type status code there you go and as we can see everything that we've written now is actually not valid 200 is not a valid status code it has to be 200 um, and you know that stuff that happens you have you have a breadcrumb in your keyboard and suddenly the zero key doesn't work like that and you just forget it and nobody nobody realizes it until I don't know uh, the Google bot tells you that you can't read your page or whatever uh, same with here, pose is, is not something, um, uh, and here 256 is also not a valid status code. Let's do, let's do a 404 here, uh, just for the, or, or let's, let, let us TypeScript tell um, what possible codes we have that start with 2 or with 4. So nice, nice auto complete. Okay, that looks already much, much better. But I think we are not quite there yet. I think we can get even better. Um, as you can see, um, I have here app.get, um, but I'm looking if the method is post. And this doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, this makes sense if this is a callback that can handle po po both get and post, but in this case, it's a callback um, explicitly tied to app.get. The rec method should always be get, not one of the others. Um, and um, we can um, use generics to subset um, this method directly at the callback function. So um, what I'm doing here, I'm extending my server request. There we go. For a method that extends method. Let's rename it. Let's say this is methods and let's call this method. That's great. Um, as you can see, the moment we are adding, uh, adding a generic there, we need to pipe it through. So the callback function has a method that extends methods um, and we pipe it through to the server request method. There we go. Um, and we also need to pipe it through to the actual callback that we're using in our get function. And here we're not just piping through any method, we are piping through the exact method that we are looking for, which in that case is get. So we are subsetting the bigger set of all methods with one particular method, which is get in that case. Um, and it tells us, hey, this can't happen, rec.method post, 
This, this will always return false since the types get and post have no overlap. This is a very nice error message that tells you exactly what is happening. Okay, let's change it to get and we are much, much happier. Alrighty, and you know, you can do the same thing then with, uh, for example, post. And see, here we have post. And then I say app.post two profiles and I have regress. This is my callback function. And I see that reg.method only can be post. Just what we are looking for. Okay. Um, great. Even more errors that we could exclude because this is what TypeScript is all about. Trying to figure out any possible scenarios that can go wrong. Um, the nice thing, if you look at the right hand side, everything that we've just written right now is plain JavaScript. There's not, not a single type annotation anywhere near. It's just what modern day JavaScript gets you. All the types are here in our actual implementation, not in the way our users are using our API. That's cool. And we are already very, very safe with what we're doing with just a couple of types. It's just, I don't know, 10, ten lines of types. If you don't count the status code, this is just how we are defining our um, our functions. Um, and this is what we get out of that. But I think we still can do a lot, lot better. Um, if you look closely, um, user ID here has a lowercase d, but here we are using an uppercase d. And these are also errors that happen all the time. Um, especially, you know, I, I'm clumsy. I'm, I'm, I'm clumsy. I uh, don't pay enough attention. To me, stuff like that happens all the time. Um, and TypeScript tells me to get rid of that. So future me is happy for me for having those great types. Um, what I want to do here is I want to see if I can get something from here and extract the correct type or the correct name that I'm expecting here. And this goes into something very, very um, advanced in TypeScript, something that's called string template literal types. Um, so how does it look like? Um, what you see here, for example, that's, that's a, a template literal. So I'm having a string and inside this string, with this syntax dollar curly brace curly brace i can have um, um you know can, can print anything anything in the string that has a two string method basically which is everything um typescript has a type that has a very similar syntax so the typescript types try to to um mimic javascript syntax um and and try to implement similar features. And string template literal types allow us to basically have something in between subsetting explicitly and having all possible values. So it's something that is directly in here, uh, which is um, a very fussy some string uh, type where um, parts are variable, parts are very well defined. Um, and this is what we're going to, to look on right now. For example, I have I could have a type um, um, starts with slash, uh, which is slash followed by any possible string. Um, if I have a value that's uh, of type starts with slash and I say blah, blah, that doesn't work. But if it's slash blah, blah, then it works. This is basically what the template, string template riddle type does. And uh, it starts. Okay. Um, but not only that I can define types like that, I can also use those types in conditional types where I can create types based on another type. So what we're basically doing is we are checking if um, a particular type belongs into a certain set. And if it does, we are creating a type of another set. So how does it look like? Let's create a type. Uh, pass route param params, let's call it like that. Um, it's a generic type of T and T extends string. And I can see if this T extends just a type like that, um, a type, a template string literal type 
um, that starts with a, with a slash, so it's a valid route. Then there is any possible string, but then we have another slash, a colon, and again any possible string. Um, if that's the case, we want to basically return what's inside the string. This is what we want to return. So um, we are creating a type out of that. So we know, okay, the, the, the pattern we want to match is slash string slash colon. And this here is infer param. So we're inferring another type. This is now suddenly a type. And you say, okay, if that's the case, return param, else return never. So else we are in a scenario that should never happen. This is something that's not a valid route. That's not something um, that's not a valid, it, it's a valid route, but it's not a valid parameter. So this is something that we don't want to allow in our software. Okay, let's test this type. So if we have const c, which is of type pass route params, uh, and we're just using that from, from the right hand side, profiles colon use id, then the only possible type that we can assign is use id. And that's true. Look at that, c is use id. That's exactly what we are looking for. If I do it with an uppercase, I just get an error. Nope, nope, nope. That's use ID with the lowercase is not assignable to, um, to, to use ID with the capital D. So we have to correct this. And this, um, this is what this, let's make this a little bit broader here, what this particular line here does. We are inferring what's coming there and we are returning that. Since every literal string can be a type, um, we have everything we need to create new string types out of it. Um, okay, pass route params. Let's remove that um, and let's do something something else that's great. So um, now we need to type get and we say okay t um, t extends string. So we're saying okay we are just allowing here to to pass strings, but we call it t. And the callback function now um, has no, sorry, the callback function has params, which extend string. Um, it passes it through server request, params. There we are, have params extends string. Um, and we're using those params here in the record. Okay, we wired it through. Um, and now we need to use this parse route params here with t. I'm just getting there in a minute. Let's do the same. Let's do the same down here. Parse route params of t. So what's happening here? T extends string. Okay, so what's happening here? Um, instead of um, instead of having the every possible string, we want to bind um, this parse to a literal string. And you can use that by saying, okay, this is a generic. Um, it's not every possible string, it's one possible string um, that's uh, um, being bound to this type variable. And we are passing this type variable to pass route params. So if we have something like profiles user ID, we are getting pass route params of profiles user ID, which is user ID. We're taking user ID passing it through callback, which passes it to server request, which uses it as, as the entry point for record. So suddenly we have use ID, which is of type string. Let's see if that works. Let's move over to the other window. Save that for prettier formatting. And there we go. It's, that's not possible. Use ID is not uh, 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 assignable to use ID with a lowercase d. Did you mean Use ID with the lowercase d. Yes, we did. We solved this particular typo. How great is that? So if you're writing something like app.get uh, slash beers colon beer ID, we are in Belgium after all, uh, rec res, there you go, then rec.params.brid should be the only possible BID, the only possible param that we have. That's great. Um, if you're dropping that, this suddenly becomes never, record of never. So, so we don't have any possible values in params. So TypeScript tells us that something is wrong here. Um, I'm not entirely happy with this type. So first of all, this starting slash, let's slop this one. Um, and also this is just, if we have 
one parameter, but we could have multiple parameters. So what we're doing here is that we say, okay, first of all, um, we look if t extends um, any string slash colon, and this is the first param that we're going to infer. And then we are looking for something like, is something else coming? If something else is coming, we are inferring that as the rest. And we are returning param and extending it with a recursive call to um, slash rest. So we are ripping out this string that comes afterwards from the slash. We are putting it to another slash and then we are recursively calling, calling the same type again. And this creates a concatenation of different types. So the first one is, oh, I found user ID, pipe. Oh, and now I found order ID, adding that as well, until we reach that particular point. Um, or let's say it like that, but first we need to have uh, one we are not having any rest, which is just that. Um, we are returning param. Let it format for you on the last point is never. This should work. So if you have something like beers, beer ID, orders, order ID. Suddenly we see we have rec params dot either beer ID or order ID. This is exactly what we are looking for. And again, if you look at that, um, all, all the possible types fit on this slide, on this screen. Um, that's all we need to have all possible scenarios typed for this express style framework. And this is the power of TypeScript. What you've seen is that we gradually adopted more and more granular types. We started with any, with can be anything, basically no types at all. Then we got strings, then we got a subset of strings. Then we were able to split that string and take little bits and pieces out so we even have proper typing for stuff like parameters, which is something that is very dynamic. So what we are having here is static types for some very dynamic input. We can't foresee how our users are going to use this API, but we can make sure that they are getting the right types based on our rules. And this is how we are first. Gradual, adopting more types as we go on, being more and more granular, more and more explicit with our types. We are structural, we can pass literals, we can pass um, um, anonymous functions without us explicitly defining a type. Um, we are dynamic, we can react to any user input at all, but we are still static. We are getting static types and making our application safe and secure. Uh, and with that, I want to say, say thank you. I want to say thank you for watching a video for 30 minutes, me typing on the keyboard. Um, now comes the awkward part. Um, this is the part where, where I usually say, oh, wow, thank you uh, for your time. Um, if, if you like it, you applaud. If you don't like it, everything becomes pretty awkward. Um, and I, I don't want this to end more awkward than it already is. So um, please, uh, there are two individuals in this room today, uh, Sam and Jürgen, um, and both of them um, have been extraordinary in the way of communicating with our speakers, and I, I'm sure with you as an attendee as well. Um, it takes some guts to organize a conference. It takes even more guts to organize a conference during the pandemic. Um, and it takes a lot of um, flexibility and heart to still make it possible uh, to have a great show for you, even though things are a little bit complicated right now. So um, this is the part where you usually applaud. Please don't applaud for me. Applaud for the two individuals in the audience. Applaud for the organizers, Sam and Jürgen. Thank you very much for your time. See you. Bye-bye.